morning, everyone. Um, delighted to be here. This is, this is my employer at the moment, so I've spent the last nine uh, very happy years. Um, I should point you a little bit of my background first, because I think uh, when I was sitting in New I did a degree in journalism in Edinburgh, and um, always felt, found it helpful to find out where the hell someone had come from, kind of really taken through. I graduated in the mid 90s, um, having dodged the last really bad economic slowdown by doing a student sabbatical and, and then various other things. I um, became a freelance, what uh, ended up joining the staff at the Edinburgh Evening News. Um, I wrote a bit, I also did a lot of production journalism because a lecturer very kindly advised me that um, the best, if I wanted to work for a good title, uh, the easiest way in, well not easiest, but the best way in would be to. Uh, I'm a sub-editor because as he explained to me, nobody wants to be a sub-editor. So go be a sub-editor, um, you know, get good at writing headlines, editing stories, pulling stuff together quickly, doing captions, picking pictures, um, develop all those skills. And then if you get bored of that, you find it's not for you, you can go to your boss and say, I really like to write now. And they're so desperate not to lose a sub-editor that will let you do some writing as well. And you start writing stuff in a decent title. Actually, I really enjoyed production journalism I found it really helpful. I moved out to London in 98, uh, joined Teletext for a brief and uh, sometimes slightly strange nine months, writing 60 word news stories and headlines that fitted exactly, exactly, uh, I think 32 characters wide. Um, and then joined The Guardian and the technology section um, in 99 to cover the, to catch the, the end of the dot com boom, the start of the dot com collapse and the recovery period. The recovery period, by the way, was far by far and away the most interesting uh, period to write about technology, because lots of people were doing cool and interesting things on next to no money at all. And that, that is what led to the birth of interesting sites now, like um, well, your Facebooks and uh, your Googles and, and, and all the rest. Um, I mean, it was the website itself in um, 2004, um, mainly because I've been blogging. And I've, on the technology section, we were the first, I think probably the first group of national newspaper journalist to, to write a blog. We just, it came, it was, it was born from the fact that we, um, our section had shrunk. Uh, our, our section was entirely dependent on advertising in the back, as Jim could tell you, because uh, we, we worked together on it. And um, the junior dot com boom, it's like a telephone directory, as soon as the boom collapsed and all the advertising went away and jobs stopped being advertised, we, um, our, our pagination went right down. This is something that's happening to newspapers right now. And when pages go down, you, get, you also get less in the paper, there's less work going around. And we had all this interesting stuff going on, and we felt a really interesting phase in, uh, in, in the evolution of the online world and all the rest. We had all these things we wanted to talk about, and we just couldn't. And we also had nowhere we could just stick um, 60 words or 100 words on a particular thing and just provide a link. It doesn't really work in newspapers, uh, where they're looking for, well, the features were generally 400, 600 words, 800 words, or 1,500 words, and that was generally the size of the feature of the Commission blog. So. So we started blogging in 2001, and um, in 2004, my current boss, Emily Bell, said, uh, come up and roll blogs out across the whole, the whole network of sites. And Guardian uh, Co. UK is organized, a bit like a, um, a federation of websites. It's, a, it's, it's not um, completely top down. The way it's organized is there's a number of subsites around the network, and you can see them more or less arranged across that plot line navigation there, so you can sport, comment, culture, um, business money on. And these, these sites each have an editor who looks after that particular bit of the site. And they all compete to get on the front page. There's a, there's a, a bloody big argument uh, constantly raging about who gets on the front page because um, a huge amount of traffic comes through this front and then is dispersed up around the, the rest of the network. Um, and uh, we spread blogs uh, through, the, uh, through the network of sites. So um, it's rather an elegant blog front page. Not many people navigate through this page, just it looks a bit, a bit neglected, so uh, we're going to try and do something better with it. But you get a list of blogs we're doing down the side, I think there's 40 there. And these places, much as our first blog was in 2001, are all about um, are really a, a places where journalists can um, jot things down, try ideas, pass on snippets of information, offer a wee bit of background analysis, do it really quickly in a very lightweight sort of way, and also build up some sort of relationship, some sort of to and fro with their audience. Which is completely impossible, really, in print, and difficult even with regular online journalism. Blogging gives us intimacy, this feeling for users that they can actually um, write something that proves the story, and, actually, and the journalist may actually um, 
be aware of it and, and, and hopefully even respond to it. And that's certainly something we encourage. So blogging was really what got me onto the website and actually working for the site properly in 2004. Um, since then, uh, there have been a couple of other really big projects, and this ties into really what's happening in the rest of the industry. Um, two, two other really big projects that I've been involved with. Blogging kind of brought around also a, a, um, a way to deliver audio to people in interesting ways, and as so podcasting was born. Anyone here listen to podcasts? Some, some, one or two listeners. It's something it's, it's interesting. It's not something that's caught the kind of traction we all expected it to. We, we do well from audio. We, we, do, we do about a million and a half audio downloads each month, of which the vast majority are delivered to uh, delivered through podcasts to you know, and the iTunes Music Store as well to people's uh, generally iPods that dominates the market. And um, we have a succession of programs, a daily news program, a, a media show, um, a science show, a technology show, uh, two very popular sports broadcasts, um, podcasts which... Um, are presented by uh, TV, TV's James Richardson, um, and uh, they do extremely well for us, and we're, we're, we're still quite committed to audio with it, we can do interesting things with audio with it. Um, traditional radio can't, although the BBC has made a very strong place to essentially attempt to dominate that market and really, and really kill it dead. Um, and uh, I think the thing about audio was for us, it's an extraordinary departure. It's the first time really we've broken out doing text with still pictures in, a, you know, in any medium. Essentially, when, when Guardian Limited started, we weren't doing much different from what we were doing in the paper. Uh, you were writing text, it was, going on, it was going on a screen rather than being printed out, but the structure was pretty much the same. Until blogging came along, we didn't you know, do things that were a lot different from stories in the, in print in the paper. Doing audio, however, is a completely different set of skills. Writing, I'm sure those of you who study it will, will, will know this, that writing for broadcast or podcast, writing something to be listened to rather than read is a, a really um, completely different kettle of fish. And um, we, uh, we had to sort of develop a model to try, and, to try and do this really well because the important thing is for us that whatever is produced comes out. It's, it's Guardian journalism. It's not good enough just to be a holy shit. It's got to be actually of a, of a reasonable standard, and some titles just haven't done this. They said, "Well, we're experimenting; it's the web, and we're not taking it particularly seriously." And um, for me and for my colleagues at the Guardian, we found that we thought that was completely unacceptable. Just wasn't on. So what we did actually is we went out and we recruited some radio journalists, and we, we, we got um, three or four uh, radio journalists in, uh, mostly poached from the BBC, one from uh, independent local radio, and um, we got them in to provide the technical core of skills and then to pass the skills on through the business. And uh, that, worked, that worked really pretty well. I mean, we now have um, all our foreign correspondents around the world on full digital voice recorders, which they can get broadcast audio from. They know how to plug them straight into, a laptop, into their laptops and fire stuff back. Um, we, um, we've covered um, every big news event in the last two